so excited to be with you here today. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about HTTP uh, requests and pagination or looping through an API that may be page, uh, creating pagination in their requests. So um, one of the things that uh, has spurred this on is I, I just solved this pretty recently for myself, but also um, I was browsing the Notimation uh, community uh, forums and I, I found this here. This is a question about pagination and looping. So uh, Adamir says, you know, just discovered it and you're really excited. So welcome, Adamir. I'm excited to, to have you here. Um, it's not my software, but you know, hey, I love the community. So, you know, great. Um, so he, he says that he has a simple internal API that takes a page uh, param as part of the URL and the JSON response has a total pages and uh, a, a current page that uh, will, you know, let you know where you're at in the pagination. So uh, I wanted to go through and showcase what I've done to kind of, uh, <clears throat> well, I'll say I've created two different automations, one to act as the API that we can use to, to query, and then the other is the actual pagination example, and they're both kind of similar. So let's, uh, let's roll our intro. <laughs> All right, so this is what we have here. This is a an example where we have a webhook, and this is one of those use cases where we're going to fire, you know, we're going to receive the webhook as the trigger, and we're going to respond to the webhook over here with the information that we generate here in a minute to create the data that we are sending to the person who's. Uh, consuming our API, I've just created a function here that returns a bunch of data. And I just use this JSON generator to just create a bunch of data that we can use. So from there, what we'll do is we are going to, let's back up one step. We can use the set to create a, a just a, a variable we're going to reference later and I'm calling it group and we're setting the the value to zero from there we're going to be splitting that data into batches you can set this to you know whatever batch size you want um, I only have 19 items so I'm going to set it to a batch size of five and we'll see this go through you know four times or so let's let's save that so that it actually runs later so this is 19 items going to be batched uh, into groups of five you know three groups of five and one group of four one of the things i've noticed when um, doing this is it kind of it seems like i need to group the data a little bit so that things stay together in these batches so really what i'm going to do is just create this group and then take the items that were in the group and return them to the next node uh, for, for use there. So the next piece that's important is, is this if statement. And we wanna know whether or not we, sh we have the right batch or the right page. So what this does is this checks the query that we passed in and sees if, we, if the page here if the page that was passed in is equal to the batch current run index. So that, I hope that makes sense. If the page is correct or the page is the right one, then we're going to continue on and we're going to continue formatting our response. If it's not correct, if we're not, if they're not the same, then we're going to be um, just going back and running another batch. My touchpad is uh, a little too sensitive here. So let's look at our format response. So we wanna create uh, this object called a payload. We're going to add into that payload the current run index and the max run index. We're gonna do a minus one here because well, this is a zero based uh, experience. And so we actually want one less than the max run index. And then we want to pass the the data 
as the current group of items that is getting sent. So the current page that's getting sent. Okay, so let's save that and then let's jump over to our actual use case of our data. And I'm gonna reload the page just so that um, I can go through it and then we'll watch it work. So we have, again, we're gonna set our initial page. So there's two different ways we can do this. You can set a variable with the set or you can set the variable with the return with a function and just return one object with your, your variable in it. Either way works. Next, we're going to do our actual fetch API, um, or our fetch uh, request here. So this is the, the link to the previous automation. And if we check out down here, I have a query parameter of, of zero. So let's take a look at that. And that's just using the page variable we just created a moment ago. So again, we want to know whether the current page is equal to the total pages. And if, it's, if that's true, we've collected all of the data from our endpoint, and we now need to go through and uh, combine that data. But if it's not currently, if it's not all the data yet, then we need to update our page so we're just going to, we're just going to uh, use the current page plus one, and we're going to return that back as the page that then gets uh, sent back into our fetch API data. And because this right here is relying on just the previous node, then that works pretty well. Just to pass in the page for both uh, the set initial page and the update page. It works great. So let's look at our combined data here. Um, what, what this is doing is there are multiple iterations that have happened. So let's, let's actually run this and then I'll explain that, that function a little better. So we're fetching our API once, twice, three times, and four times, and then it finishes. So let's let's take a look at this now. Um, also, here's here's showing that it ran four times, and each of those four times it ran with different data, and they all had some stuff come through. Okay, so let's look at our combined data here. Um, you can see that there are all 19 items have come through, and let's look at this. So uh, what we want to do is we want to reference or access the items on our fetch API data. So that's just the name of our HTTP request node here. And so that has, and then we're going to do a, an array map to, to get all of the different executions that have happened. And then we're going to use another array uh, another for each to push all of those data pieces into a variable that we can then return. So that is really, I mean, that's pretty simple, um, but it's a really important piece uh, and it's something that I've, I've run across several times. So I wanted to kind of get that out uh, and, and for my own reference as well in the future. I'm going to be putting um, the links to all of this so that you can you can have access to it and um, that'll be great. If you have um, any questions about how this works or how it works in your case or, or whatever, um, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. It, I'd love to to you know chat with you and help you figure out what is going on with it. Well, and with that, you know, that's uh, me signing off for, for this quick tip video. Uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.